Question number seven is about the Young double slit experiment. A beam of monochromatic visible light is being shone through a couple of slits and producing a pattern of fringes on a distant screen. Uh, part A asks us to explain why this arrangement with two slits is used to produce visible fringes rather than just two separate identical light sources. Well, in order to get interference, we need coherent sources, that is sources that have a constant phase difference. Two separate sources will not have constant phase difference. Part B asks us to have a look at this diagram and figure out what the phase difference is at a couple of different points. So let's take a look here. We can see that straight through here we have this bright fringe. At point D we have a dark fringe. This means that the two waves arriving must be out of phase with each other, so they must have a phase difference of 180 degrees. At point B we have a bright fringe, which must mean that the phase difference is zero degrees. They are in phase. For part C i we need to calculate the separation of adjacent bright fringes, the distance between O and B. Now they've given us 8 millimeters here and we can see that is the separation between 1, 2, 3, 4 fringes. So the best way of calculating this will be to do 8 divided by 4 which gives us two millimetres between each set of fringes. So that's two times 10 to the minus three metres. And for part two, show that the wavelength lambda of the monochromatic light is around five times 10 to the minus seven metres. Well, lambda equals AX divided by D, where A is our slit separation, which we know to be 0 0.5 four millimetres times 10 to the minus three multiplied by our fringe separation two times 10 to the minus three divided by the distance between the slits and the screen which is 1.5 metres which gives us 5.33 times 10 to the minus seven metres. Part D asks us to calculate the path difference in nanometres between the light waves from the two slits that meet on the screen here. We know that the first dark fringe will occur at a path difference of 0 0.5 wavelengths. We know that the first bright fringe will occur at a path difference of one wavelength. And the second bright fringe then, which is A, will occur at a path difference of two wavelengths. So two lambda is going to be equal to two times our wavelength we calculated in the previous question, which was 5.33 times 10 to the minus 7 metres, which gives us 1.07 times 10 to the minus 6 metres. In nanometres, that will be 1,070 nanometres. Part E shows us the energy level diagram for the atoms emitting photons in the light source used in the Young slit experiment. The electron transitions between the first three levels are shown here, producing three photons of different wavelengths. We need to use this diagram to show that this arrow Y produces the photons of a wavelength around five times 10 to the minus seven meters that we used in the interference experiment. So first of all, we need to work out the difference in energy between the f minus five and the minus 8.7 levels. So 8.7, take away 5 equals 3.7 that is 3.7 times 10 to the minus 19 if we look at the scale over here and we know that E equals 
H C over lambda. So we can rearrange this to get lambda equals H C divided by E, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 3.7 times 10 to the minus 19, which gives us 5.4 times 10 to the minus 7 meters as our wavelength, which is approximately correct. And part two says that neither of the photons shown by the other transitions can be used for the experiment because they are not visible. State in which region of the electromagnetic spectrum each photon is produced by the transitions X and Z. So we need to do the same equation again, this time lambda equals 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 times 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by the difference between these two for x so 5 take away 2.7 so that's 2.3 times 10 to the minus 19 which gives us a wavelength of 8.6 times 10 to the minus 7 meters that's around 860 nanometers which is longer than the wavelength of visible light so that will be infrared and if we do the same exercise again for Z that will give us a wavelength of 3.3 times 10 to the minus 7 which is 330 nanometers that is too shorter wavelength to be visible light so that must be ultraviolet